Yeah, thanks, Dr. Zakir Naik. You're a big help. Um, I have one more question. I'm a bit confused between the two verses in Quran. Um, the first one is in Surah Baqarah 62, yeah, which, which says that if you believe in one God and believe in the last day and do good deeds, yeah, you shall have nothing to fear on the day of judgment, yeah, and you will get your reward with your Lord, yeah. Mind it, in this surah, it doesn't say it, uh, that you have to believe in the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as the last messenger. And there is also another surah which supports this, which is the 22, chapter number 22 and verse number 17, I think, in which it says a similar thing, that those who, do, who believe in one God, who believe in the last day and who do good deeds will be fine on the day of judgment. But then there is also one more verse in the Quran which says that whosoever amongst you comes to me without the religion of Islam, it shall not be accepted of him and he shall be among the losers. So in that last verse, does Islam mean believing in one God and believing in Prophet Muhammad and believing in all the other rituals? Or because Islam means submission, so whoever has submitted, yeah, is submitted. So, you know, what's the meaning of Islam in the last verse? The brother asked a very good question. He's quoted the verse of the Quran of Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 62, that all those who believe in Allah and believe in the last day, irrespective of whether they are Jews or Christians or Sabians, they shall have no fear and inshallah they will have the reward. Similar thing is repeated in Surah Maida chapter number 5. So brother is asking that here the world doesn't mention believing in Prophet. If you read the context of this revelation brother, what happened? People came to the Prophet and said that we have been Jews, we have been Christians, we have been Sabians. Can God forgive us? In that context the reply was given as long as you believe in Allah and the last day, irrespectively previously, whether you're a Christian or a Jew or a Sabian, you will get the reward. It does not mean today a person who says he's a Christian and who believes Jesus is God, he will go to Jannah. No, it does not mean that. Not Jesus is God, believes in one God. Ah, believes in one God. But if they believe Jesus is God, then they won't go then to Jannah. That's fine. But my, fine. Concept, my point is, yes. believes in one true God. Correct. So he has to believe in one true God. And if he believes in true God, he also follows the commandment of God. Simple. Yeah, but maybe he's confused with that, yeah. So that means he's believed in a confused God. No, he, believe, he, he believes in his creator, yeah, but he, he's not yet reached that level. So then if you ask me the question, a person who truly believes in God and a little bit confused from his heart and yet doesn't believe in Prophet Muhammad, will he go to heaven or hell? That's your question. My question is, he's clear that there is one God. Clear there's one God. He's confused in the Prophet. He does not do idol worship. He does, does not do that. He believes in one God and does good deeds and believes in the last day. Can he go to Jannah is your question? Yes. Fine. This answer, and I'll come to your last question also about that Islam is the only way of life. The other verses talk about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yeah. So if you truly believe, you have to believe in Prophet Muhammad. Yes. But if you ask me, no, suppose I believe in God and if I die today. Yes. If you did good deeds, you believed in God. But I, ha no, I have two verses of the Quran supporting yeah. me that you believe in one God, you do good deeds, and you believe in the last day, you shall have nothing to fear on that day. That's what I, I tell you. Yeah. Two verses, but the context of the verse is what? Yeah, that the context know. of the verse is when people came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they wanted to accept Islam that previously we were Jews, we were Christians, then the verse is said. So yeah. context is important. And coming back to your first question, mm -hmm. that Quran says in Surah Al-Imran chapter 3 verse number 19, in Naddina in the Allah Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of Allah is submitting our will to God. Submitting. Yeah. Submitting our will to God. So, and Quran also says in Surah Al-Imran chapter 3 verse 85, if anyone desires any other religion besides Islam, it will never be accepted of him. And he shall be amongst the losers. Yes. So now submitting our will to God means, first you have to find out which is the true God. Yes. And when you find out, you have to come to Allah. Yes. You can't say, I believe in true God, but it's Jesus. I believe in no, true God. No, I believe, I believe in Allah. Huh. That's, so if you believe, believe in Allah, in God, yes. you have to follow what is the commandment of Allah. Now, when, when I, you believe in Allah, and if you don't come to commandment of Allah, that means it's not a true Allah. I believe Allah is not created by anyone. He is not born of anyone. He doesn't have kids. Uh, he, you know, Correct. Uh, Kulhu Allahu Ahad Allahu Samalam Yalud Walam Yulad Walam. MashaAllah. I believe in that, Masha. yeah, but that's, yeah. that's where my state is. That's right. Yeah, but now, now, that's not complete Islam, that's part of Islam. Yeah. Part of Islam. Yeah, right. Even believing in Prophet alone will not take you to Jannah. You may believe in one God, believe in Prophet, but do bad deeds, you will not go to heaven. Fine? Yeah. So what you have to realize, if you believe that true God, when you know where you got those Kulwa Lawas, from where? From where you got this from Kulwa Lawas? I got it from the Quran. From the Quran. Yes. So from the Quran, you also get 
you know, Muhammad, that, that part Jabad. agrees with my brain. That part agrees with my brain. Yeah, the rest I have questions. So uh, what question you have asked me, I will try and right. <laughs> so on the day of judgment, I can tell you I gave this brother, I tried to remove the misconception. Right, okay, I'll take uh, well that's a little bit of a private question. I'll ask you through email. Okay, fine. One no more problem. Question, the last question. So when you ask from email, yeah. when you get convinced, that time I'll ask you to believe in Prophet Muhammad also. Sure, sure. Okay. Fine? Yeah, my last question is. Uh, we see uh, this uh, the the style of uh, the kalima, yeah, that la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah means there is no god but Allah, and Muhammad is a messenger of God, yeah. Now Islam uh, has this distinct style. I have not seen this style in Christianity or Judaism. That kind of kalima, do I don't know? I mean, is was there the same no. kind of kalima in no. those two religions as well? No. You know why? Yeah. Because it says there is no god but Allah. Yeah, and similar, Pro similar, similar in those lines. I'll tell you, and Prophet Muhammad is a messenger and servant. So no one should worship Prophet Muhammad, therefore it's mentioned there. Fine? Yeah, Tomorrow so people should not start worshipping Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yes, yes. We love him, we respect him, we revere him, we are to die for him, but we don't worship him. I understand. So maybe in Christianity they could have something like, there is only one God and, Jesus, and Father, Jesus, peace be upon Father, him. Father, Son and Holy Ghost. Well, no, but I'm talking about what Jesus told, not what Christians are telling today. At every time of the Prophet, it was La ilaha illallah, that time Isa or Rasulullah, no problem. It was, it was that time? No, that is what people had to believe in, not yeah. in Arabic, in the language they spoke. No, what I'm saying is from your yes. study, from your yes. study, have you yes. found a kalima like that in, in what no, Jesus would have not, said? Not in Arabic. Okay. At every time, that you had to believe in the Prophet to be a Muslim. Yeah. So at that time you have to believe in one God and you have to believe Jesus was the prophet of God. At the time of Moses you had to believe that there is no God but Allah and Moses was the messenger of Allah. You had to believe in that. I understand but did you see that reference? It in, is understood. In... There is no reference in the Quran. The because... Quran says they were messengers. It is understood. And if I don't believe in Jesus, now also I am not a Muslim. Quran right. says you have to believe in each and every messenger today. Yeah. So believing that time was a must. Yeah. And today you have to believe in Musa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam. You ask me the question, did you have to believe that time? Simple no, logic, no, I, yes. I know you have to believe at that time as well. Yes. What I'm saying is, why don't I see any, any, any kalima like that in today's Christianity or Judaism? Oh, today's Christianity has changed Christianity. How about Judaism? I it has changed, it has changed, brother. The so, so, they removed, so they removed the basic of, of the kalima? Of course, of course. They have changed the messenger to God. Yeah. It is mentioned in the Bible today also that Jesus is not God. He never claimed divinity. He is yeah. a messenger of God. Yeah. That's for the teaching of the churches. Yes. Today's form is the changed form. How, how about Judaism? They still believe there is only one God. They don't regard Moses as God. So, did you see a kalima like uh, there is only one God and Mo Musa al Rasul Allah or something? No, like but that? they believe that Musa al Salam was the messenger of God. They yeah. believed in that. Yeah, but At the same time, they even believe that he was an imposter. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. So, that's wrong. Yeah. yeah. If you believe Jesus is an imposter, knows Billah, that is wrong. So, so you find some of the other mistakes here or there. Right. Therefore, Quran is the Furqan. Quran, yeah. Furqan means the criteria to judge right from wrong. So yeah. whatever matches with the Quran, we agree it's the word of God. What is against the Quran contradicts, we say not the word of God. What doesn't contradict and doesn't match, ambiguous, may be right, may be wrong. I understand your point, sir. What I'm saying is, did you see any reference in probably in your study of Judaism? Probably no. That the kalima of the, so no. even the kalima is gone. I mean, they don't no. even have that. Maybe I, in Aramaic. Maybe it will be in Aramaic. Or I don't know. Yeah. I don't know of any such. Right, right, yes. right. So I mean, so 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 they were still believing in this thing that you have to believe in Moses as messenger. Yes. But, but there is nothing concrete like la ilaha illallah or you know like. I don't know of any in the scripture. Right, right, okay. Right, okay. One well, my last question is... Um, uh, Third last, fourth last. This last. Yeah. Last of the last. Just last. Recent, last of the last. Last of the last, yes. Recently in India, it was in the news that uh, same-sex marriages got allowed, yeah? And, and uh, on reading upon it, yeah, I found out that they said that it is at the genetic level of people. Genetic, it's in the hormones, yeah? What they desire, what they don't desire. Now, I understand that Islam is completely against this. It doesn't allow this. But what I'm saying is, if someone's got that it, at a genetic level, yeah, and it's his choice, Very good and, and he, was, he, was, he was born with that, uh, with that kind of tendency, and yet Islam chooses to, uh, to punish him on something, on something that he was born with. I agree with you. So God it should... It sounds illogical. Yeah, so God, God made him like that, and uh, God is punishing him for that as well. Brother asked a question that recently in India, homosexuality has been permitted, not permitted, but the law says it's not a big crime that was there in the Indian constitution. Yeah. They have softened it, not permitted yet. Yes, yes. It is a court case that took place in Delhi, it's not a law yet. Yes. There's a who and cry yet, there are many organizations fighting against it. So it's not a law. It's a law in Canada, in yeah. USA, in UK, not in India yet. Right, okay. 
And today, there are some scientific research that say that homosexuality is genetic. Yes, yes. So the brother asked the question, if homosexuality is genetic, then who's to blame? How can you consider it to be a sin? Very good question. Yes. This research was done earlier, a few years back, and later on, what was found out that this is totally false. Right. And the person who propounded this himself was homosexual. Right. Okay. So there's no scientific proof yet. It's an assumption. Right. Science doesn't testify yet that homosexuality is genetic. Right. In fact, Quran says in Surah Araf, chapter number seven, verse number eighty-one, we says that do you have lust for men more in preference to women to homosexuality? Yes. Talking about Qaumi Lut. Yes. It is prohibited in the Bible also talking about Lut alayhi salam. Yes. Also in the Quran is prohibited. Yes. Homosexuality is prohibited completely. Right. It is an assumption that it's genetic. It's not genetic at all. How does it happen? I'll tell you. Yeah. The psychology they tell us that once you overdo a thing, you start losing the pleasure. Right. So what God has permitted the normal sexual way of life, you start overdoing it. You start doing unnatural things. Right. What God has permitted natural things, you do unnatural. You start doing from the reverse side. So once you get fed up of doing it so often, that's the reason scientific research says a person who has no extramarital affairs enjoys the sexual life with his wife and husband the maximum. Yeah, but this tendency is found in small children. I mean, you know, I'm telling you. Yeah, so I mean, they have not got married yet or let tasted me, it. Let me complete. Yeah, yeah. We'll come to children later on. For them, talking about the adults. Yes. <laughs> How it comes in children, I'll tell you it. Okay. So what happens that once you start overdoing it, you want to enjoy more. So that thing what is normal doesn't excite you any longer. Then you start doing unnatural things. It's not genetic. Right. Talking about children. Yeah. How it comes in children. It doesn't just come out from birth. It's not from birth. Yeah. Because they watch pornographic movies. Right. They watch blue films. It's haram. The parents, the way they behave in front of the children. All this has a psychological impact on the child. Right. Don't tell a person who's born, then he starts becoming homosexual. It's not like that at all. It's right. a misconception. Right. Scientific research doesn't say that. Right, right, right. Okay. It is because of the overexposure. Now children watch the blue films. Yeah. The channels. Free to air. You know, there are yeah. more pornography channels than other channels. Yeah. Very good money. So because of the media, that's how when they see on the channel, they start emulating and that's how they divert. Right. Who's to blame? The channel. Right. Why right. did the parent allow them? Right. Okay. So they will be responsible for that. Right. Okay. Okay. That, that answers me. That's fine. Uh, one thing you said was that Brother, God, God has to be... Last of the last question. Yeah. Just, God has to be logical, you said. Yeah. So why did no, he God choose... God has to be logical. God is logical. God is logical. Okay. So why did he choose, uh, 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 taking into account Islam is a correct religion, why did he choose to bring you into this world in Islam and so many others in a different religion. So, so that good. means he's being partial from the birth. Very good, very good question. Yeah. Brother, the question that some people are born in Muslim family and a person born in Muslim family, chances Muslim, exactly. born in non-Muslim family, non-Muslim. So why is God impartial? Maybe if you were born in a Muslim family, you would have been a Muslim. Yes. Correct? Yes, yes. Very That's good how question. it usually goes. Very good question. The criteria to go to Jannah is not to be born in a Muslim family. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, every child is born in Deen al-Fitr. He's born as a Muslim. Yeah. He submits civil to God. Later on, he's been influenced by his parents, by his elders, by his teachers. Then he starts doing idol worship, fire worship. He converts. Therefore, when a non-Muslim becomes the Muslim, the more appropriate word is revert rather than convert. He yeah. comes back to the original faith. Yeah. Now, the criteria to go to Jannah is not to be born in a Muslim family. Sure. The criteria to go to Jannah is Surah Al-Asr, chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3, which says, well, us. That by the token of time, man is very in a state of loss, except those who have faith, those who have righteous deeds, those who exhort people to truth, and those who exhort people to patience and perseverance. The criteria go to Jannah is all four things. Iman, righteous deeds, exhorting people to truth, exhorting people to patience and perseverance. If a person is born in a Muslim family, the first criteria the chances are more. Yes. Not the remaining three. Yes. Fine? Now you, you may be born in a righteous family, but not having Iman. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, why was he born in a Christian family or a Hindu family? You know, he should be born. Brother, I mean, it's more likely that he gets the other things easily. There are four things to go to Jannah. If a person is born in a Muslim family, but does not have righteous deeds, does not do dawah, he'll go to hell. 
Yeah, okay. They will not go to heaven. Yeah, Only by having a name, Zakir, Muhammad, Abdullah, Sultan, will not take you to heaven. Even practice is important. You may be born in a family which has righteous deeds, but may not be having Iman. So everyone has different combinations. But Almighty God says in Surah Fusilat, chapter number 41, verse number 53, Sanuri mayatina fil afakhi wa fi anfusim hatta yatabayyana anna ulhaq. Soon we shall show them our signs in the furthest regions of the horizons and into their soul until it is clear to them that this is the truth. So Allah takes it upon himself that to every human being he'll put in his heart directly that this is the truth. Like how God sent me to put it directly into your heart here. Yeah. Correct? So, no, now, so you now, mean to wait, say there wait, is no wait, advantages? Wait, wait. Yeah. No, no, there are advantages, disadvantages. So it's a big advantage. You got everything very easy. But for a person who is in a different religion, it's, it's a comp he doesn't even come to Brother, know about you it got sometimes. so easy. Yeah. In three hours, you got it directly. Very easy. Right or wrong? You don't think it to be easy. Yes. See how you take it. I'm saying how lucky you are compared to the other non-Muslims. You attended my talk. Yes. Yet you're not accepting it. Who's to blame? You are God. Yes. You. Yeah, but there are not things. Me. There are things. <laughs> there are a lot. No, religion no, no, is a no, big no. thing. One not big to. thing. You want to make it big, you make it big. You want to make it important, it's important. Yeah. The problem is that Almighty God puts in every human being directly. Not always to Dr. Zakir Nai. Yeah. I am only 0.00001%. Yeah. It's not me. Some through me, some through others, some directly. So on the day of judgment, you cannot complain to God. Leave other, at least you cannot complain. Yeah. You cannot go and tell God, I didn't know about Islam. Yeah, I cannot. Yeah, you I cannot. Yeah, I cannot. Because you know, you may be having more knowledge of Islam than many Muslims born in Muslim families. Yeah, because the way you're quoting Quran, yeah. the way you're asking me question, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. So now after reading so much about Islam, mm -hmm. and yet if you don't accept, Allah will question you. Yeah. You have no excuse whatsoever. The other non-Muslim will deal with them afterwards. Yeah. Let's talk about you first. Yes. Uh, you I, have no question at all yes. on the day of judgment. I have. I, I can say there, there were a few things which I was, I did not get the right answers No, to. there are many Muslims who are born in Muslim family, not few, have many questions which are not answered. Yes. You have few, they have many. So you are in a better position. You cannot complain to God. I you have say, few questions not answered. I would, give God, I would give God that these are the basis because they did not get answered. That's why I did not accept it. If I don't accept it, maybe which, I will later. I don't know. Which question thing. you don't have, tell me now. <laughs> tell me now, come on. You can tell God, Dr. Zakir Naik asked you in front of 20, 30,000 people, what question you don't know about the well, Quran, come on. First of all, I, the answer that you gave, that it was, it's because of media and blue films. I know, I know small, small kids who don't even have access to that and still they have do, that, those Which kids? Name them. What nonsense are talking? Which? I'm a medical doctor. What do you know? I have are you a medical doctor? I have seen it. Are you a medical doctor? Well, let me tell you. I, I have I'm seen asking, my... Are you a medical doctor? Yes I'm or no? I'm not. I'm Fine. an engineer. I'm a medical doctor. Fine. Okay. Now you are telling a doctor you have seen. If I tell you that I have seen a building made of paper, you know, come in Bombay. I have seen a building, the pillars were made of paper. Will you believe in it? I won't. I have not seen it. You are finished. Yeah. See, this is the first alu al zikri in Gundula Talamud. Ask the person who knows. Now yeah. I have seen, you have seen. Does it carry weight? Yeah. yeah. I have seen a building made of paper. Will you believe? No, but your point is that it's only because of media, but I know... I no, know point so. is it is not genetic. There is no scientific proof at all, it is genetic, I'm telling you. Right, right. What I'm telling you, it can be one of the reasons. Yeah. What is, there can be 20 other reasons. Right, one right. of the reasons can be media. Yeah. You tell me it can't be media, I'll disprove you. Right, right, right. One of the reasons can be media. Right. Fine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very good. Actually, I have to Actually. go through all the other questions. Very I well, have go mind. through. And I will need some time. And then take your time. I will do it. But, but, yeah. hope it's not too late. I don't know how long I'm going to live. But see, if I die I, in the state of getting more knowledge, yeah, then I can always tell God that I was, no, just, no, I was just getting more and more knowledge. You cannot. You cannot. I'm As, telling you, you I, cannot. I, you cannot. I will give Shahada on the day of judgment. I give you a chance. You cannot. See, I don't know if I'm going to live tomorrow or not. See, 90% of my questions are answered, but I have to go through more things. People accept Islam with 10% acceptance. So that girl, according to me, you have more knowledge than all the people who accept Islam. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Maybe that's true. But my principle is, unless I'm 100% clear, I will, I will not no. take such a big step. I will only take that big step if Brother, I'm 100% clear. Many things you did in life without knowing 100%. Did you know how much you're going to earn in Dubai that you came here 100%? Yeah, See, that way I'm ready to say the, the, the thing. But, but the thing is, I've but seen some thing. Muslims who say that if, if you have an iota of doubt, 
then you are not a Muslim. So who said that? Who said that? They say if you have, if are you, you going to follow the Quran? Are you going to say some Muslim? Forget about Muslims. No, you, you want to, to you judge. Have, you have to believe it in hundred percent. If, if you, even if you have ninety nine percent faith. Who said that? Not, who said that? Does the Quran say that? It doesn't say that. You follow Quran, don't follow the other Muslims. Don't follow me, also follow Quran. So if I tell you, if I tell you that I believe that Prophet Muhammad was a prophet of God 90% and 10% I have doubts, am I, am I a Muslim? See, you you tell no, me do you believe in messenger or not a God? I other believe, doubts are separate. I believe in one God and I believe in his messengers. 90%. I believe in his, yes, 90%. I have Which 10% you don't believe? Tell me now, I'll clarify I, I that. I can't recall those questions now. Why? No, yeah, so you I can't recall? This is escapism. No, not really. I'm I, not, I am true to I'm, my heart. I am I'm not, not escaping. I am not asking you to accept Islam. I'm not asking you. I know. I'm only telling you, if God forbid something happens to you before you accept Islam, you will not be forgiven. I'm only telling you See, I'm an doing, advice. I'm not being prejudiced here. I'm true, being too. Take I'm your not, time. Take your time. When you need me, you can call me on the email. Sure. Zakir at irf.net. My pleasure to reply to you, brother. How do you spell irf? Uh, uh, I-R-F dot net. I-R-F dot net. Okay. It's a short form for Islamic Research Foundation. Right, okay. Yes, or you can watch me on Peace TV. Sure. Inshallah. All right, okay. Thank you so much. See you yes, next sir. time. Inshallah.